Hey Rhinos, Dr. FJ Schofield, Schofield Chiropractic Training, Rhino Digital Training, an online training program that is changing the profession. We have people doubling and tripling their practices, their new patients, their collections, their volume off our online program. I want to share you this, the Rhino Consultation. This was typically something I would only go through in depth with our members only, but we're going to send it out there so hopefully it helps you. This is the key. Getting the new patients, getting your marketing dialed in, and then doing your first, second visit, the consult and the ROF properly. Then you got to fix them, but at least that gives you the opportunity and the time to set up the care plan so you can fix them. And the consult and the ROF are so important. This is what allowed me to grow from nothing, opening my doors to 200 patients visits a week in 14 weeks. Uh, and continuing to grow after that. And I wasn't you know, just seeing a bunch of people for free. This was running a for-profit business. And so it's so important to know how to do this. And this is where you start building the relationship. So if you've done a lot of other programs, take a shower, get the slime off of you. <laughs> Um, there's this going to be totally ethical. You don't have to give away your integrity and your sincerity and your honor and have a successful practice. You can do it the right way by building relationships, by caring, by getting interested in your people, by being totally transparent, by delivering amazing results. And so you don't have to sacrifice who you are. You can still go home, look in the mirror, and feel good about what you're doing. No fear, no manipulation, just mastering psychology and mastering, uh, the, the skills of communication. So that's what this is all about. Let's get into it. The consult is so important. So seven steps. It used to be six, but you're getting a bonus step. <laughs> so again, it's one of the most important visits in your office. This is where you start building the relationship. You want to create relationships. Okay. If you get a relationship and you get results, you're going to have a booming practice. Okay. So, and that's where you don't have, then you won't have to screen every weekend after you've been in practice 10, 15, 20 years. You're gonna have a lot of referrals, a lot of reacts, and that nice steady foundation because you've built these relationships. And it starts at the consultation, okay? And if it's done well, people are gonna want to do business with you, okay? That's what creating that relationship is all about. So, what are we gonna do? This is the process I've created. Show appreciation, state the purpose of the visit, build rapport, find the objection, find the limitation, dig for chronicity, and then the bonus seventh step, we'll go over that at the end. So, one huge mistake is doctors talk the whole time. The consult is about asking questions and listening. You're doing a, recon a reconnaissance, a recce, as my father likes to say. So you're going in and you're figuring out where is this person's understanding of their body? Where is this person's understanding of chiropractic? What do they really want? What are their goals? How is this affecting their quality of life? And now you can use that, those goals, that understanding to build the motivation so they commit to care and they follow through with care. All right, because it takes time lots of times to get those results. Again, tendency is to over talk. That's why having this structure, I'm very unscripted. Okay, but I have a uh, outline that I want to hit every visit when I do my consultations and report of findings. But if you're going to delegate it to people, you've got to have it scripted, okay? And the key is to, you want to be scripted without sounding scripted. So you don't want to think about what you have to say. You want to be thinking about what the person is saying. You want to be totally focused on that human being in front of you that's put their trust in you, okay? And they've come into your office and you have an opportunity to change their life and have a real impact on them. And then you do that with people over and over again, and now you have an impact on your community. And this is real, guys, really changing people's life. And then, of course, the reward for that is a massively successful practice and, you know, a great life. Okay, so show appreciation. This can be done beginning, middle, end. It doesn't matter. My father liked to do it all uh, right away. Um, Dr. John Murray, who I interned with, he would usually do it at the end. But you just thank them. Appreciate you choosing our office. It really means a lot to me. That's all you got to say. I know there's a lot of chiropractors around. Really appreciate you choosing us. That's it. Okay? But it means everything. You gotta look people in the eye. You gotta shake with authority, with strength, conveying your authority. Look them in the eye and have a true conversation with this person. Okay? It's common sense, but with technology now, it's happening less and less and less. State the purpose of the visit. So, what's gonna be done? Are you adjusting or are you not adjusting? What are you doing? We're gonna do a consultation. What else are you gonna do? You're gonna do examination. You're gonna take x rays. All right, then I'll analyze the x-rays, I'll have you come back and I'll go over those with you at the report and then we'll get you adjusted at that time. So let them know up front what's going to be done. 
Okay, and if you get that person who's dying, like, all right, well, I'm gonna analyze them, can you hang out for an hour, and then I'll get, you know, I can do the report and get you adjusted, or can you come back later today, you know, if that person's really in bad shape. Now, if someone's coming through town, and they're only gonna be here, you know, today, lots of times we'll do the x-rays, and we'll have them in the office for like an hour or two, do the x-rays, analyze them, get them adjusted, lots of times print the x-rays on a DVD or something, print them, like a, copy them on a DVD, and, and give them to them, so they have that, okay? And so I have to hear these people, well, I won't do that. I, uh, come on, man, have a heart. Don't let your procedures kill your humanity. You want to, again, care about these people, do what's best for them in the frame of taking great care. So I always analyze their x-rays. I'm not adjusting. You know, Taking x-rays isn't a business practice in my office. We really take x-rays to analyze them, to figure out how the subluxation, the misalignment, where it's at, and how we're going to fix it. So we have to analyze those. All right, and if they want to just get cracked real quick, there's 17 other people in our little town that can do that, um, and that's okay. All right, and having the strength to let a few of those people go. Right, I just want to get cracked. I don't need those extra. You know, we don't that we don't do that. I don't think our process is going to be the best fit, and uh, I think you know maybe check out this or that this or that office, and uh, they can take care of you. You know, professional, courteous, and allowing that person to find their better fit, and everybody wins and it's having that strength to let a few go to then build that foundation of quality patients quality patients that want what you do and that's how you create a really strong practice build rapport this is done throughout you want to create that connection and the biggest thing is just get interested right ask questions and actively listen where is this person from what are they what's their job what are their hobbies what do they do how is this affecting their life and then just look for some common interest, right? And that makes the conversation very fun. If you, I know they like sports, I like sports, it's easy to talk and get to know that person, uh, you know, different things, whatever it is. If they uh, lived in Arizona, I lived in Arizona. If they're born and raised in Wisconsin, my wife's born and raised in Wisconsin. So finding that connection, if they love the Packers, I love the Packers, whatever it is, and it just makes the conversation a lot more fun. You create that connection so they want to do business with you. This, again, is building that relationship. Remember, laughter is the sound of rapport. So have fun. Share a laugh with this person. You don't have to be serious and it's terrifying. And I heard someone on doc and when I was in school, his console was, if you have the most serious thing, more serious than cancer, than heart attacks, this subluxation, and then well, everyone had it. Oh my God, no. It's worse than nuclear war. Ah, no. Ah. I'm like, that's not fun. And it's wildly unethical. There are different levels of the subluxation, so let's get real and let's have fun, man. Let's have fun, help people, and be really successful. And this is how you do it. So, Bill, again, actively listen. Yes, okay. Mm hmm. Yes, okay. Really interesting. Get involved. Get sincerely interested and start really caring about the people coming to your office, and you will be rewarded for that, okay? This is not a script, this is just real compassion and really caring and being thankful in an office and caring enough to listen and get to know this person. All right, and it, you will be rewarded, I promise you. And it's fun. Find the objection. So what is their past experience with chiropractic? How are they, they you know, the person that, someone got side posture and they didn't like it? You need to know that or else the whole time they're thinking, is he gonna jump on my little back? Is he gonna jump on my little back? And they're not listening to anything else. Or if they had an activator adjustment and they hated it, or if they had an activator adjustment and they love it, you need to know that. And you go, we can do that, or we can't do that. Okay? Oh, I had one visit and he fixed me. Well, you gotta show them, no, he didn't. That's why you're back here again. It's the same issue, it's just gotten worse. That's why the pain is different. Because they lots of times think different pain, different issue. They're not a doctor. So you gotta show them that. So getting in and real, uh, just so get into their previous experience with chiropractic, their understanding of chiropractic. Where are they at? If they think crack in the back and you're thinking, restoring you know posture and correction you've got to come here or else that's how you have those explosions at the ROF they're thinking one visit you're thinking 35 or 20 or whatever and then they're like Poof. so that addressing that and understanding that is huge to being on the same page at the report find the limitation this is gigantic this is going to be the goal this is the motivator finding the quality of life limitation I call it the QL getting that quality of life limitation and setting that goal play with my grandkids again golf this summer, run again, continue working, whatever it is. Like I have farmers, they just gotta keep working. So that's the goal. And for the slow healers, it's so important. 
when they're coming along slowly, letting them know, yeah, stick with me, John. We're going to get you working again. We're going to get you exciting. You're going to golf again. Stick with me, okay? Got to be really specific with this. Really, really specific. If they can't walk, how far can they walk? You can only walk one block. Because then maybe in a month in, they're walking 15 blocks, and they're going to forget, and they're going to think, I'm not getting better. It still hurts. Yes, it does still hurt. But you're walking 15 blocks. You used to walk one block. That's a lot of improvement. So, again, doctor means teacher, right? So you've got to be that teacher, that coach, that leader that takes control of the psyche, their psyche and shows them their progression, right? My best tennis coach, Clement, I used to be really hard on myself. He'd say, it's coming, F. It's coming. Stick with it. You're learning to open up the court. You're learning. That's what great leaders, teachers, coaches do, and that's what you have to become. So getting that goal and then showing that progression consistently. So you got to be super detailed with where their quality of life goals are at, their quality of life limitations now. So if they're not sleeping well, what does that mean? Are you waking up five times a night, eight times a night? What is it? Because if it's eight and then six, two months in, it's two, that's a lot of improvement. Your body is healing. Okay. Dig for chronicity. Lots of times this is not, this usually the first time someone has a mild ache is not when they come to the chiropractor, right? They usually take a few ibuprofen and it goes away. And then a year later, something acts up and it goes away. And then five years, they acts up and now it won't go away. And you have to show them, listen, this is the same issue that originally started five years ago. Okay, it's just getting worse. And then they, then they understand why they need to come in for 90 days or whatever you're recommending. So this is really important to show them this most of the time. Not always. I do have people calling like, hey, I've been going to chiropractor for years, doing whatever, you know, quarterly. Perfect. Come on in. We'll take care of you. We'll do that too. So that happens. But that's not the majority. You know, 90%, they've been waiting, waiting a long time, and they need a lot of care, right? That's why. So showing them this, it makes it very logical that they're going to start three times a week because it's been going on for 10 years. Key question, when is the first time you had any type of issue with your na uh, back? minor or major. When's the first time you had any kind of issue with your neck? When's the first time you had a headache of any kind? When's the first time you had any kind of a vertigo episode? When's the first time you remember having any kind of allergies? <coughs> and then you'll see, oh, this has been going on 20 years. Like, and, you know, and usually the first misalignment is birth, which I tell people at the report. The bonus step, we're here. You stuck with me, appreciate it. You're an overachiever. Not easy to listen to me for this long. <laughs> Um, so the seventh step is the symptomatic interview. Do you now or have you ever had boom, 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 boom. And the reason this is important is one, you're going to explain to people, I want to get a good idea of how your nervous system is functioning. So do you now or have you ever had blank? Amazing how many people have dizziness, vertigo, tinnitus, sleeping problems. So getting those issues, breathe, asthma, allergies, because sometimes the back, you know, you're six weeks in, the back still hurts, but their allergies are better. They're breathing better. They're sleeping better. You can go, listen, your body is healing. It's just healing slow. It's going to take time. Okay. So again, that symptomatic interview really helps. One, you understand where their body's functioning at. And two, show progression. And it's fun, right? People go, and you won't get credit because they don't think that, you know, they don't understand that a specific adjustment of the atlas could completely change allergies. And they go, oh, my allergies are gone. I think that pillow I bought five years ago is finally working. Like, so you've got to say like, hey, no, you know, and each month when you do your re-exam, you do one each month, you check in. How's the allergies? How's the breathing? How's the sleeping? Okay, how's whatever? Oh, that's better, that's better, that's better. See, your body is healing. Homeostasis is coming back online. Give it time, stick with the plan. We're getting there. It's coming, we're getting there. All right, so that's a really important uh, step. It's on the back of the consult form. So again, start with these steps. Communication is a skill. You got to hone it. You got to master it. You got to learn to build that rapport. Learn to, you know, and it's, it, it becomes, it's an art. It's definitely an art. Just like martial arts or sports, it's an art. And each person's a little differently. And it's not this one size fits all that doesn't work. Some people, the key is they have a huge objection. You got to address that. Other people, it's really showing them, hey, this is a chronic issue, and then they'll stick with it. Other people, it's finding that goal, and then they're going to commit and stick with it. So it's, each person's a little differently, and how you're going to help that person change their life is all starts with the consultation. So really important. Take your time. Master this. No fear. No manipulation. 
that might be easier. You know, it might be easier to scare people, but it's the wrong way to do it, and long term you will lose. Okay, so do the hard work of really honing your skills. Do the hard work of becoming a master communicator. Do the hard work of really caring about each and every person that comes in your office, and you will win massively long term. I promise you, the rewards will be plentiful. So we're done. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment. I'd love to help you out in any way I can. Uh, if you have any friends you know this could help, please share. And again, Dr. FJ, Rhino up, keep charging. Have a great day. Move straight ahead without hesitation. And I'll see you next time.